Hello, this is Mr. Stegas I'm going to take you through some of the problems on the 6H assignment. Okay, first one is number one, find the equation of the quadratic with the graph. Okay, so um, now instead of having the equation and draw on the graph, now we have the graph, we've got to come up with the equation. Okay, so first uh, big key thing here is that our x-intercepts are at 1 and 2. So that means we know that y equals... Um, we're going to put an A out here because we don't know what that number is out in front. Uh, we do know that it's positive because it opens up, but we don't know the rest of it, so we'll just leave it as A. So we know that this has to be X minus 1 for this X-intercept and X minus 2 for this X-intercept here, right? Okay, we also know that when X equals 0, Y equals 4, right? So then what we can do here is put 4 in for Y equals a times 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 2. So we get 4 equals a times negative 1 times negative 2. 4 equals negative 1 times negative 2 is 2a. Divide both sides by 2 and we get that a has to be 2. So then that means this 2 right here is going to go into our equation right there and our equation will be y equals 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. Okay? And remember these can be written officially in any order and it's still the same equation so don't worry about what the order is. You do not, it does not have to match. Okay? Um, let's look at the next one. Number two, find the equation of the quadratic with this graph here. Okay, <clears throat> so one x-intercept is at 2 the axis of symmetry is x equals 3, so this is a distance of 1 here, so that means this is also going to be a distance of 1. So 2 to 3, that makes this 4 right here. And now it's just like what we did in number 1. So now we know that the uh, our equation will be y equals a. We don't know what a is yet, but we do know our x-intercepts, x minus 2, because 2 minus 2 is 0. And x minus 4 because 4 minus 4 is 0 okay and then we know this point right here is 0 and 12 so we know that when x is 0 y has to equal 12 so we do 12 equals a times 0 minus 2 times 0 minus 4 12 equals a times negative 2 times negative 4 12 equals Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8a. Divide both sides by 8. And we get that a equals 12 divided by 8 is going to give us, what, 1.5? Okay, so then this 1.5 goes in for that a right there. And we get y equals 1.5 times x minus 2 times x minus 4 for the equation of this quadratic okay all right taking a look at number three finding the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c the equation of the quadratic whose graph cuts the x-axis at five and one and passes through to negative nine okay okay let's take a look at three find in the form y equals ax squared plus bx quadratics whose graph cuts the x-axis at 5 and 1 passes through 2 and negative 9. Okay, so um, if it cuts to the x-axis at 5 and 1, those are, are going to be our two zeros, right? So we get y equals a times x and x, right? So this, officially this x is 5, so 5 minus 5 gives us 0, and then this x here is 1, 1 minus 1 gives us 0, right? And then we also know that, pa we know that it passes through the point 2, negative 9, so now we plug 2 in for the x, negative 9 in for the y, and solve for a. So we get negative 9 equals a times 2 minus 5 times 2 minus 1. So negative 9 equals a times negative 3 times 1. So negative 9 equals negative 3a divided by negative 3. And we get a equals 3. Okay, so our quadratic would then be y equals 3, because that's our a, times x minus 5 
and x minus 1. Okay, now it does actually ask us to put it in this form here, so that just means we just got to foil this out and then distribute the 3 through at the end. So we get y equals 3 times, I would just leave the 3 till the end, x times x is x squared, x times negative 1 is negative x, negative 5 times x is negative 5x, negative 5 times negative 1 is plus 5, so we get y equals 3 times x squared minus 6x, if we combine those two, plus 5, and then our last step is to distribute the 3 through. So we get 3x squared minus 18x plus 15 would be the equation for 3a. Okay, let's take a look at c. It touches the x-axis at 3 and passes through negative 2 and negative 25. So if it just touches the x-axis at 3, we know that we have now y equals, we don't know what a is yet, but now since it just touches at 3, that's a double zero at 3. So this x is officially 3, so 3 minus 3 will give us 0, and that's going to be squared since it just touches at this one spot. Okay? We also know that when x is negative 2, y has to be negative 25. So negative 25 equals a times negative 2 minus 3 squared. Negative 25 equals a times negative 5 squared. Negative 25 equals negative 5 times negative 5 is 25a. Divide by 25. And a is negative 1. So this would be y equals negative and then we got x minus 3 squared. You could put negative 1 or just plain old negative, but it still wants it in this form, so we have to FOIL this thing out. So what I would do is I'm just going to get rid of this squared and write another x minus 3 in here, and I will FOIL it out. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Negative 3 times x is another negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So we get y equals negative times x squared minus 6x plus 9 and distribute the negative through to get a final answer of negative x squared plus 6x minus 9 is the equation for c. Okay? Okay, 5. Find the equation of the quadratic function which passes through these three points. Okay, now this one is, um, since we don't know the x-intercepts or y-intercepts, we just have three points, this is going to take on really a completely different look. Okay, so if you hopefully watch the notes, which shows you how to do this, I'm, so I'm just going to take you through that, those steps right now. Okay, so um, we know that our quadratic function is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to simply plug our x and our y in for each one of these separately. Okay, so on the first one we get negative 2 equals a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus um, our c. Okay, so then we will simplify this and we get uh, negative 2 equals 1a plus 1b plus 1c. It's kind of handy to actually write the numbers out there in front. It will um, make more sense when we get to doing our uh, system of equations. Okay, so this is one of our systems. Another system will be with 2 and 4 in there. So we've got 4 equals, um, let's see, a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. So that simplifies to 4 equals 4a plus 2b plus 1c. Okay, so there's another one. And then our last one here will be uh, 12 equals a times 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c. So we get 12 equals 9a uh, plus 3b plus 1c. Okay, so now that we have those three, we're going to rewrite this. Um, and we're going to rewrite this. We want the a's, b's, and c's to be on the left and then the numbers to be on the right. So I'm going to write them all kind of in a, in a stack right here. So we've got 
1a plus 1b plus 1c equals negative 2. And then we've got the next one over is 4a plus 2b plus 1c equals 4. And then the last one is 9a plus 3b plus 1c equals 12. Okay? And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to plug this into our graphing calculator into this poly simult 2 to go through and solve this thing. Okay, so on your TI-84, uh, this will, uh, I've, I've checked and it's not going to work. It will work on some TI-83s, but uh, so far as I can tell, it's not going to work on the Calculate 84 app at least not on the iPhone. It might work on Android. I'm not sure if it has it. But what we want to do is we want to go into um, our apps and we're going to go down to number nine, PolySimult2. Okay, so I'm just going to simply push nine. And then we want to do simultaneous equation solver. Okay, so again, that was apps, nine, and then poly simultaneous equation solver. So this here is asking for three equations and three unknowns. That's exactly what we have. And then we're going to leave all this as auto normal and float in degrees. That's really not applicable here. Doesn't matter. So I'm just going to keep going through. Oh, I guess I can just hit next. Okay. And now what I need to do is I need to fill these in. What I want to do is I want to clear those all out and fill it in with the new info, but your easiest bet is just to leave the numbers that are already in there and just enter your new numbers over the top. So we've got 1, 1, 1, negative 2 for the first row. 1, 1, uh, 1. Oops. Is this not working? Oh, let's see. we got to do a couple enters. There we go. 1. So I've got 1x plus 1y plus 1z equals negative 2. Very important to hit the negative 2. If you put subtract 2 over there, it's going to mess everything up. So make sure you uh, don't do that. Next one, 4, 2, 1, and 4. So 4, enter, enter. Um, what this would be is if you had a negative number in here, and we happen to have all positive, so that's not going to really matter there. So 2, enter, enter, and then 1. And then we enter in our 4. Okay, and then the last one, 9, 3, 1, and 12. So 9, enter, enter. 3, enter, enter. Oops, how did I get 36? 3, enter. There we go, enter. And then 1, enter. And the last one is 12. And we push enter. Okay, so now all these numbers here should add, match all these numbers here without the A's, B's, and C's, which it looks like it does. And then we simply hit solve, which is the graph button, and we get X equals 1, 3, and negative 6 for uh, X, Y, and Z. So X equals 1, Y equals 3, and Z equals negative 6. Okay. Really what that means for us, this X is actually A, Y is actually B, and Z is actually C. Look, A, B, and C. So that means our equation is going to be Y equals 1X squared plus 3X minus 6. And that's our equation. Okay? And we've got to use the graphing calculator on that. So um, some of you I know will not have the graphing calculator you don't have a TI-84 with you. So um, just do your best. Do, a, do what you can. We can just kind of go through. As long as you understand how to do this, then when it comes to test time, we'll figure something out. Okay? Last one. Quadratic function is this. Passes through the points, so forth and so on. Plot the three points on a set of axes and explain why these things here. So um, let's plot this here. I really kind of like this question. This one's a good one. So 1, 1. Oops, 1, negative 1 is the first point. And then we've got 2, 1. And then we have 5 and negative 5. So that's about right here. Okay.
So now it says explain why A must be negative. So if you look at these points here, the only way to connect these is going to be something. And again, we don't know exactly what, but we know it's going to look something probably kind of like that, right? It could be right here and right there. It could be a little bit farther over. Roughly, it's right here. We're just kind of guesstimating. Okay, so the reason why A must be negative is because we know for sure with these three points, this has to open down. There's no way to have this thing open up to go through all those points and just be a, a quadratic. Okay, explain why A must be negative. Uh, this graph, uh, these points have to open down, have to only makes a negative uh, quadratic. Okay, so let's go with these points can only that's only make a uh, negative quadratic which means it has to open down okay um, really quick I'm gonna peek in the back of the book to see what how they explained it they basically have the similar thing to what we have so they said it can only make a negative quadratic so a has to be less than not yeah less than zero so that means it's negative okay um, explain why the c over here must be negative okay and the reason for that would be like basically the c is going to be our y intercept right okay so what we would go with on that one here, y-intercept is below the x-axis, so c has to be less than zero, right? So um, y-intercept is negative, so c is also negative, right? Uh, so c is less than zero as well. That's why c's got to be negative, because it's got to cross through down here, since this point is already below the y, sorry, the x-axis, so this has to be negative. Okay, and then explain why B in turn must be positive, okay? So we, ha we know that X equals negative B over 2A, right? We know that this X um, axis, sorry, the um, axis of symmetry has to be positive. So we know that this X here, that this over here is going to end up having to be a positive. So since we already know that A is negative so this is going to be x equals negative whatever the b is all over two times some negative number the only way this is going to be positive is we have a negative over a negative so this b has to then be positive otherwise our axis of symmetry is going to be over on this side to the left of the x uh, the y-axis okay uh, let's see, back of the book says the vertex has an x coordinate of negative b over 2a and has to be greater than 0 since a is less than 0 and b is greater than 0. So basically what we just kind of talked about in there, but they just explained it in words without plugging stuff in. Okay? All right, that's all we have for the 6H assignment. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks.